Hello everyone. I hope you're enjoying Fresh Fest so far. Today I'm here to talk to you about the platform in action. So to quickly introduce myself, hello, I'm Daisy Gray and I'm a customer success consultant here at Fresh Relevance. My role is essentially to make sure our customers are successful in using our platform. So in our session today, I wanted to show you some real examples of inspirational marketing. I'd like to say I was interrupted, but I don't think I was. Take a bajillion on four. Oh, what time are we at? Da, 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 da. 50 minutes. And go. Hello everyone. I hope you're enjoying Fresh Fest so far. Today I'm here to talk to you about the platform in action. So quick introductions. Hello, I'm Daisy Gray and I'm a customer success consultant here at Fresh Relevance. My role is essentially to make sure our customers are successful in using our platform and that you see the results you're looking for. Today, I wanted to share some inspiration um, in the form of some real examples, some statistics, and also some considerations for personalization and how you can take your marketing to the next level. So before we get started, let's actually talk about what is personalization. We talk about it a lot now, but it's not actually a new concept. Imagine in the olden days, you would have gone to your local corner shop to do your grocery shopping, and that shopkeeper would have personalized your experience. They'd have known who you are, who you buy for, they'd know your order history, what your preferred products and brands are. And they can use that information to make sure you have the best experience and also to recommend any new products. So when we talk about personalization now, we're essentially talking about replicating that, but in our online e-commerce world. When we talk about successful personalization, we define it as true individual personalization that spans every touch point you have with that customer. Now, that can sound a bit intimidating, so I want to next talk about a personalization framework that can help. So here we have used two concepts, which you may be familiar with, just to see how you can map that out. The first one is the customer journey. So where in the purchase funnel is that customer? Is it awareness? Are they considering products? Are they actually at a decision point where they might make a transaction? But we're also considering loyalty and advocacy as a part of the post purchase. The second concept we're looking at is personification or profiling. So that is really about deciding and recognizing different groups within your customers. So it could be something like their life cycle stage, whether they're a new or existing customer. It could be that you have different personas or different segments of customers that you want to treat differently. Or it could be that you have a particular business objective and there's a group of customers that will help you meet that. By plotting these two concepts together, we can start to build out a framework and where we may want to personalize based on where they are in this matrix. So you can see across the top, we have the customer journey. And then down the side, we've identified two groups of customers that we want to personalize to. So new customers and loyal customers. If we take a look at what that mean, might mean, we can see here that there is different personalization on the website to do a new customer experience and a returning customer experience. Now, in Fresh Relevance, there's actually a great feature that does allow you to group all this content and easily create these experiences. 
So if we take a look in more detail for a new customer, we've got a generic welcome banner, but for a returning customer, we've personalized with name, but we've also changed up the imagery to be relevant to their browsing history. Further down the page, we have some recommendation for our new customers, we may want to show best sellers, but for returning customers, we can start to personalize those recommendations based on what we think that customer will love. If we start talking about popovers for a new customer, we may ask them to join our newsletter. However, for a returning customer, you're likely to already have their information. So perhaps you want to show a discount voucher or even recommended products themselves. So where do we start? And it really is the power of data. The more we know about the customer, we can then personalize effectively. So in Fresh Relevance, we're able to use a data capture, which is essentially a popover, which will collect the user's email address and pop it into your ESP. This will allow you to actually grow your lists, but also for us to take personalization to that email channel. So broadening across those touch points. This email address combined with behavioral data from your website gives us in-depth data for us to then start personalizing and creating relevant content. This is a particularly nice data capture example because it considers all of the things that we need to do when creating a data capture popover and that's really about the context so when a customer is browsing your website, when is the right time to deliver this message? Have they browsed the site enough to then want to join your list? Is the message right? So this is a great message because it actually gives an intrinsic value for giving your email address by providing a discount. And also the look and feel. You want to be eye catching and you want it to portray your brand. So. If we jump into our customer journey stages, now we have that data. How can we start to personalize? At the awareness stage, generally, we want to convince someone that you are the right brand for them to be purchasing from. So some great tactics we have is a price affinity predictor. So when a new customer hits your website, generally you don't know anything about them, but there is a wealth of data available, but you need to know how to analyze it. So a fresh relevance, we've created a cold start solution for recommendations where we can show products at a price point that that customer is likely to buy at. This is great because it reduces bounce rates when customers come into the platform, but perhaps see a product that isn't quite the right price point for them. Another example of personalizing a newer user experience would be based on their last click. So for example, source referral, someone has clicked on an Instagram advert and we want to make sure we continue that experience. They clicked on a particular product, let's make sure that surfaced, but also what products are similar to that. Example here from Oak House Foods, which is really nice, where they have a new customer offer. So if a customer is still trying to decide which brand to go with, this may well be that offer that just pokes them in your direction. I really like this example because it's not intrusive and it follows you around the website. So by the time I do find a product that I like, I still am reminded of this offer. Social proof is something we will talk about a lot during this session. And when we talk about social proof, it is essentially using the wisdom of the crowd to instill confidence in the consumer. So that is confidence that they're selecting the right product, but they're also buying from the right brand for them. In this example here, we're actually showing the number of people that are browsing each of those products at the moment. In an online world, this is similar to a group of customers all crowding around a shop window or around a particular product in the store. 
Next, we can talk about consideration. And this is where we'll start to see some tactics coming through for your returning customers. So probably one of my favorite examples is from cottages.com here. And what they're doing really well is acknowledging that relationship with the customer that yes, we know who you are and we can use that information to help you on your journey. So they're assisting customers with a pop over here that is showing the last product, the last holiday in this case that they were looking at. So it allows the customer to come in and easily pick up from where they left off. The next thing I'd like to talk about is using product recommendations. So recommendations are really powerful. They can help customers discover new or more suitable products, and they can also increase your upsell and cross-sell opportunities. We have seen up to an 11% sales uplift using product recommendations. So it's probably one of our most successful tactics. This example here is from LSE Retail, where they are tailoring their recommendations to loyal customers based on their browse data, which is where they've got some inspirational, you may also like products, which can really increase that sale. For new customers, we can rest on social tactics. So great example here from Skinny Tam, where they are showing their best sellers. So again, if a lot of customers have bought these and they're highly rated, then they're likely to be nice products for me. Whilst we stay on the social proof element, we've actually found that 44% uplift with customer reviews being added. So peer reviews, they really instill confidence in a product or even a brand. And we have found that over half of customers actually look for ratings before purchase. I know personally that I do every time. For new customers, this really gives a wealth of information that you can consult before actually making your purchase. If we just scroll down the page, you'll see that these have even been employed in their product recommendations. So again, that confidence in the product that is being worthwhile to purchase and it will be right for me. In terms of our integrations, we integrate with many ratings providers. So Trustpilot, FIFO, Bizarre Voice, and many others that I won't name today. Another great example for your returning customers is to advertise that loyalty program. So by telling customers that they're going to get a double point bonus here, as Space NK have, you are just adding another reason why that customer should A, purchase with you, but B, do it soon before the offer runs out. Next, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about browse recovery. So the Fresh Relevant system can generate a number of signals and we'll talk about our triggered emails a few times today. But browse is really important at that consideration stage. Customers may be browsing products, but they may not find the right product for them or still be deciding. So if they've looked at products but not put them in the basket or in the cart, we're able to generate a signal and trigger off an email program to them. And this can increase sales uplift by up to 5%. So this is one of my favorite examples from Glasses Direct. And what I really like here is that they are using the helpful marketing. It's not directly led about the actual sales they'll make, but how can they enhance that customer journey? How can we help you choose? And then we also show them the product they were looking at. Perhaps that is the correct product. You can also see if we scroll down the if the customer's looking for something else, that wasn't quite the right product, but we're actually showing recommendations of similar products that they may be more interested in. So how can all these tactics come together, especially when we talk about web personalization? So here we've just demonstrated how all these tactics can come together and personalize. So a personalized banner, which is based on recently viewed categories, or if it's a new customer, maybe top categories. We can also use personalized product recommendations here. And this actually goes down to 
the variant level. So here you'll notice that all the products are very blue and that's because the customer has been browsing or perhaps carted or purchased in the past blue products. So we know they have an affinity with that color. We can also use other content and this is a lovely example because we're actually using the customer's name. You can see it in the coupons. You can actually see it in the countdown timer. And we can also use their weather and location information as well. Finally, on here, it's always great to have some moving content on your website, something that's going to change without you having to change it. And that's where social media feeds come in. And we can actually personalize them to specific hashtags or even handles based on the customer's experience and behavior on your website. Next, I'd like to talk about tactics we can use at that decision making process. So when the customer is almost buying, but perhaps just need that last push um, to get over the line. So here is a lovely example from Glasses Direct where they're using popularity messaging. So again, social proof tactics to make a customer feel like this is the right product. So here they're showing the number of people that have bought this frame today. Again, if we're going to liken this to an in-store experience, it's the same as there just being that one product left on the shelf. It shows that there's demand and generally that there's a reason for that demand. In a similar vein, we can use this to create urgency. So this is a lovely example from Molten Brown where they've actually embedded a countdown timer inside their offer banner. So they're counting down to when their 25% discount sale is going to be over. And this, again, the urgency, it's going to get customers to act. Dynamic pricing has been a really successful addition to the LSE website where they are showing what a split payment plan would look like. So with Klarna, for example, you're able to have a £30 lamp, but rather than pay one payment of £30, it could be three installments of £10. And this makes products more affordable for customers. Perhaps that it's not quite payday. Um, purchase. If you are able to split those payments, you're more likely to get conversions. This has actually driven a 7% increase in Klarna payments on their website. And what's really nice here is it actually works down to the product variant level. So let's say, for example, that the white lamp is £10 cheaper than the black lamp. Depending which product you're looking at, the banner will dynamically recalculate what that payment structure will look like. Another example here um, is cart recovery. So we already talked about browse abandonment. Carts are also abandoned and actually over 61% of carts are abandoned. It may be as simple as the customer getting distracted, perhaps they're window shopping, but by sending that triggered email after the cart has been abandoned for a period of time, can get customers to come back to your site and convert that purchase. What I really like about these examples is the way that they actually display the products. You can also add reviews in here, star ratings. You can show if there's any price drops, which all will help to instill confidence in the customer that this is the right product, but also urgency if there's a sale. Again, the example on the right has some lovely big call to action buttons, which are definitely essential to your email design. Sticking with the triggered email approach here, we can also use them to send out price drop alerts. So this is a great tactic for loyal customers who have been browsing your website and we know that they have browsed a particular product and we can send them an email to let them know that that product has now decreased in price. And what that decreases is completely customizable. And what this is going to do is just to help that customer to Firstly, to consider purchasing that product again, but it's got that extra poke that, oh, it's a bit cheaper now. It's more affordable now. So perhaps I will go on and buy. 
Our final example here, again, a triggered email for back in stock alerts. So I think we've all had it before. You found that perfect product and then you go to actually purchase it and it's out of stock. And that isn't necessarily a great experience with your brand. But what a back in stock alert allows is for you to really change that into a positive experience. So not only are you telling customers that the product is available, but you're showing that you care and that, you know, it wasn't in stock before. Now it is. Would you still like to buy? I really like this example with the messaging now and always, we're always here for you. In our final section, I just like to talk about how we can increase that loyalty and advocacy. We all know that repeat custom is a great source of revenue. So fostering this loyalty and advocacy is super important. And it actually takes us back right to the beginning with your welcome email. So once a customer has signed up to a newsletter and they receive that welcome email, that is the start of your relationship. So you want to make sure that it's showing who you are as a brand. And that's why I really like this example from Wet and Wild. They've also included a personalized coupon, which just allows the customer to get that discount. But it's also going to stop it being from leaked on the website, for example. So you're going to make sure that only your new customers do have that available. Another great example of fostering loyalty here from YouGarden, where they gave their VIP customers early access to the Black Friday sale. And that again, just gives some value back to the customer. It's a thank you. It's that sort of trade. Another great example, which I've personally taken advantage of in the past is replenishment emails. This is a great example from Viovet where they have different products with different lifespans. So they may have medication that is 30 days versus maybe six month courses. And we're able to customize those triggered emails to go out at a relevant point in time before that product needs to be replenished. This really does build loyalty and advocacy for, well, several reasons. Firstly, it stops you to forgetting something that you may have forgotten to purchase otherwise. It also makes that purchase journey very simple. You can see it's nearly time to reorder with a lovely click that will go through, pretty much build out your basket. And then the company already has your billing and delivery information to send that straight out to you. So as for a customer experience, it is lovely and seamless and it just generates that loyalty. For our final section, I'd like to talk about social sharing. We all know how big a part of our lives social media has become, and it really can generate communities and buzz around your brand. So we'd suggest that you leverage this, you know, advertise your hashtags, advertise any handles that you may want people to join and really create that community field. And it will pay back in dividends as we see here. So Molten Brown have actually found that by using user generated content, so reviews, social feeds, they've seen a 73% increase in click throughs from their email, which is pretty amazing. So we've gone through a lot of examples and hopefully you found some inspiration today, but where do you start? So firstly, start collecting and analyzing that data, learn as much as you can about your customers, map out their journeys, and then consider where can you use personalization to really enhance their experience. Once you've got that, you've started to map out your framework, start personalizing, start small, start seeing what works, maybe what's not working so well, and build out your journeys from there. The final thing I'd suggest is to test, be flexible and be innovative. We have a very fast paced world. What worked yesterday may not work tomorrow. And every group of customers is different. What works for one company's customers might not work for another one. So see what works for you, see what works for your customers and keep pushing forwards. 
So thank you for listening. I hope you've enjoyed our session today. I'm now going to hand over to Lucy, who's going to talk you through the latest platform developments and some snazzy upcoming features to get excited about. Thanks for listening again. Bye-bye.